Right, Beata, thank you so much for accepting to sit with us and share your you know, knowledge and experience with us. First of all, it's a time of commemoration in Rwanda of the genocide against the Tutsis. And probably it would be interesting for you to share with us whether that is actually what has brought you here uh, this particular time of the season and what you'd be expecting um, uh, when you're here. Well, you know, I'm an uh, ambassador, honorary ambassador uh, of UNESCO for the teaching of the, of the Holocaust and but also to provide the genocide. So last year in this mission I had been to Burundi and this year invited by IGAM, uh, I'm coming here and uh, to see a country where uh, there was such an awful genocide, uh, the Hutus who killed the, the big, uh, first a million of uh, Tutsi. So uh, to come here and to see now uh, uh, it happened in 90, uh, 1994, but today that you have a country where uh, from the government it's now uh, uh, the, the project and it's realized to have a commemoration, you know. Mm -hmm. I have been, I had to have a lot of commemorations since I don't know how many years, but now I was surprised how a country where such awful crimes could happen that now there's reconciliation about the Tutsi and the Hutu and also this commemoration I met yesterday in the morning and then in the afternoon I think the most impressive was at the start, you know, when you saw all the young people because it's now to educate the young people that something can never happen again, you know, it's always a mission you have if something over had happened and I think this is real, very realized, uh, realized in Rwanda and uh, also I think that Rwanda in Africa where still a lot of uh, killing is a country where you could, can give an example of how they overcome this past. Right. You say it so well that Rwanda can give an example to the world, especially looking at its past and, and, and today, the transformation that the country has had. But sadly, we still have, you know, countries in Africa where we still have, you know, fightings and conflicts that are sometimes ethnically, you know, based and stuff like that. Is humanity learning? Do you think humanity is really learning from Rwanda? And you know, it's very difficult in history to provide something, but uh, I think, uh, I, I think perhaps that Rwanda could, but it's a way to make uh, more more public what happened here. You know how you overcome and how you are now commemorating. Uh, perhaps you have to have a special envoy to all these African countries where genocide is taking care and say now how we overcame it, you know. But it's up to you to, 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 over, to, to show to these countries how it, uh, they can manage and how far. The most important is to prevent the genocide, you know. That's my, this, for this I had been nominated by the United Nations. But to prevent it's very difficult because uh, when the genocide starts, uh, you know, uh, it's very difficult and you all don't have, you know, from Rwanda, you didn't have the help from the, from this United, from the United Nations, uh, from France, and you had been alone, you know, mm -hmm. but you overcome it very well. Right, because why I ask you this is, yesterday I was actually speaking uh, to, to, to the manager of the genocide memorial in Gisozi, and, and usually that memorial receives a host of guests dignitaries, leaders from different countries who, after going back to their country, you expect that they have learned from what they've seen there. But when they go back, election processes, they are there fighting. How does that make you feel? That's very, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know. So, you know, I think you have to, uh, what you're doing, you uh, address to the young generation. Perhaps those are coming, not a lot, a lot of young people, you know. I think so the, the power is coming from the youth today, you know because perhaps they are not, uh, they are not, uh, you know, I would say not belong to parties, they are not political uh, informed or uh, there's no pressure on them from the right wing party or from somebody. I think the youth, independent youth, uh, could perhaps do something. Right, uh, but, but sadly also, like today we are commemorating now, 23 years later, uh, you know, f f most of the young people of today, probably if someone was born in 94, they're turning 23, and probably they might not re really know the, the weight, the magnitude of, 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 of what it takes and how it feels to go through a genocide. You know, the youth of today, do you think they will really relate 
well to what really oh, happened? Yes, you have. Uh, we had just two, uh, survive, two people who helped uh, uh, the Tutsis to, uh, to save the Tutsis. You have the four memorials. Uh, I, I s yesterday we uh, visited this memorial here in, uh, in Kigali and I think for young people it's uh, very impressive and if they see the pictures uh, of, the, of the awful killings and the modern, uh, all this material which overlapped in the, gra the graves, the mass graves, they cannot be uh, indifferent. It's impossible, you know. So you have had also to put some pressure on them through the, through the education, through the teachers, you know. It's not necessary to go to the memorial and then to go out as if nothing happened. This is impossible, you know. Right.